matter what you have done or where you are at this moment, God's grace is greater than all forces. In holy pages, this truth can be found. A promise to stand on when darkness abounds. All right, never loses and the wrong never wins. For grace will always be greater than sin. broken and bruised from those choices you've made. Sin has a price and so often you've paid. Oh, but Jesus is waiting. New hope is in Sing that song, ladies. God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't we thankful today that God's grace is greater than sin? The Foster Sisters singing to the honor and glory of God. May God continue to bless their ministry in singing. Good morning, saints. Welcome to the CLW Sabbath morning service. Those of you who are live on YouTube and on Facebook, Good morning and happy Sabbath to our dear Niles sisters, Sister Nalja and Janet Niles, Janet Janice Niles. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Sister Carol Smith, always enough blessings to you, my dear sister. Sister Camelia Arthur, good morning and happy Sabbath. 
Brother Alexander Boyton, good morning and happy Sabbath. Everyone else live on YouTube and Facebook, welcome. Uh, Brother Stetson Greensward, good morning and happy Sabbath to you, my dear brother. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us this morning for our Sabbath service. I, um, as you can see on the screen, the topic today is Ruth Finds Grace, part two from last week's sermon. So if you missed last week's sermon, you want to catch up on our YouTube channel, Cisterns of Living Water. You can catch up on the sermon that you missed last week and all of our past programming over there. But today we will be continuing with Ruth Finds Grace, chapter two in your Bibles, in the book of Ruth. Without further ado, we are going to go right there. Good morning, Sister Gilded Weeks. Happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath to mommy, rest of your family. Thank you for joining us today. Let us pray, saints, Father in heaven. I thank you once again for another opportunity to present your truth to your people. It is your sheep, Heavenly Father, and you have commissioned me to feed them. And so I pray this morning that I will feed them the bread of truth, the living water of righteousness. And I pray that whatever your word needs to do in the hearts and minds of all the listeners today, tailor it by your spirit to fit their lives and may they apply it to their lives for their sanctification and looking forward to all our glorification in the magnificent and wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Ruth, beginning in Ruth chapter 2 and verse 1. Ruth chapter 2 and the verse is number 1. Bible says, And Naomi and king's man of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. All right. So I want you to remember Naomi last week when we touched on Naomi and Ruth in Moab on their way back to the children of Israel. Remember what Naomi said to Ruth. She's going back empty, cursed of the Lord, <laughs> the Lord testifying against her. This is Naomi's mindset. Ruth, Ruth's mindset is, I'm no longer a Moabite. Mm -hmm. Where you're going, I will go your people, my people. Mrs. Anika Greensward, Sister Anika Greensward, good morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. All right? So, remember what Naomi said. She's going back empty. Now, the Bible says her husband had a kinsman named Boaz. Mm -hmm. He was a wealthy man. Okay, his name was Boaz. Now, go to Ruth chapter 2 and verse number 2. Bible says, And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. All right. So we know Naomi of the children of Israel coming back without husband, without sons, one daughter, all right, whose husband also is dead, who was the son of Naomi. Reassess the plight of Ruth. Remember what we began last week. Ruth the Moabitess. Okay. Ruth is a Moabite widow among the children of Israel. For if you missed last week, a Moabite, the Moabites are the enemies of Israel. The Moab, the nation of Moab, came from the incestuous relationship between the daughter of Lot and Lot, who caused the father to be drunk and lay with him. Neo, uh, Ruth, the Moabites, recognizing the situation that they are widows, she said, I am going to go glean in the field that I may find, that important word, grace, that I may find grace. Let me go glean in the field. Go to the book of Leviticus chapter 19. Remember what I said last week, when we ended the sermon last week in verse 22 of Ruth chapter 1, I mentioned that Ruth and Naomi are going back to Israel 
during an appointed time, an important time. And it will show you why I reprimanded Naomi for her mindset, mm -hmm. for her thinking, okay? That God is the author of her troubles and that the Most High has testified against her and that she's going back empty as opposed to Ruth. Okay, his mindset. Leviticus chapter 19, the verse is 9. What does the Bible say? And when he reap the harvest of your land, yes, thou shalt not wholly reap the corns of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. This is an instruction given to Israel. Remember, God is not unjust in his dealings. God is fair and God wants to ensure that everyone is taken care of when it comes to his children. He understands that because the world is a fallen world, there will be some measure of inequality. There will be some rich, there will be some poor. That is not the reality in the new heaven and the new earth. But as the world will progress in sin, God understands the inequalities that will exist. So he tells Israel, when you are reaping your fields, do not reap the corners of the field, neither shall thou gather the gleanings of your harvest. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 19. Recognize the God of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 24. And the verse is 19. Bible says, When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a ship in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger. For the who? For the stranger. Who else? For the fatherless. And? And for the widow. That? The Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand. So, God says, if you are carrying, you're bringing in the sheaves of your harvest from the wheat field, and it happens to fall on the ground, the Lord says, do not go back to pick it up. Whenever anything falls down, when you leave the corners, it is for the widows. It is for the fatherless. It is for those who don't have someone to provide for them that they might go after you so that they can glean and have something to eat. God is creating a system in Israel where everyone attends to their neighbors, the fatherless, the widows. You must understand that God is a just God. And God wants, to, uh, wants us to understand that we are indeed stewards of those who have lesser means around us. So at the time when the Bible says Naomi and Ruth comes to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest, it means though Naomi comes back with nothing, there is something to be found in Israel. And so Ruth says, considering this is the time, let me go out, mother, that I may glean the field, glean as of corn after him, Boaz, in whose sight I shall find grace. Who is distinguishing faith here, brothers and sisters? Who is distinguishing conviction here, brothers and sisters? Consider Ruth does not take on a defeatist attitude. A Moabitess in Israel, she does not accept defeat. Naomi of Israel have accepted defeat. Ruth does not allow her circumstances, does not allow where she's from to dictate her belief. Her faith stakes claim in her desire for grace. And she did not say that maybe I shall find grace. She says that I shall find grace. 
in my humility, in my gleaning in the field of Boaz. Go on, the book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 3 says what? 3 to 10. And she went and came and gleaned in the field yes. after the reapers. And? And her hap was too light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. Yes. Who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Yes. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. Uh -huh. And they answered him. The Lord bless thee. Verse 5. Then said Boaz unto his servant. Yes. That was set over the reapers. Whose damsel is this? What's the question? Whose damsel is this? Hallelujah. And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said. Yes. It is the Moabiteth damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. I want you to understand now. How Israel views Ruth. So Ruth says, let me go glean that I may be noticed of Boaz and find grace. Boaz indeed comes and notices Ruth. And when asked, who is this woman? It is not Ruth, they say. It is the Moabitish. Not simply the Moabite, the Moabitish woman. Your identity, Ruth, they say, is in the fact that you are from Moab. You look like a Moabite. Okay? And for this reason, you are not of us. You are Moabitish. So maybe, Ruth, you came with all your ways into our camp. Hmm. You came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Hmm. Verse number seven, the Bible says. And she said, I pray you. Let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and have continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Yes, so Ruth is saying, let me do this. Let me glean. Let me take so that I can have sustenance. What did Boaz say to Ruth in verse 8? Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not? My daughter. My what? My daughter. Did he say thou Moabitish? No. My daughter. Go my on. My daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here, fast by my maid. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Yes. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? Uh-huh. And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. What happened in verse 10? Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Yes. Why have I found grace in thine eyes? Yes. That thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Ha, ah, my brothers and sisters. So... Ruth prays, let me go glean that I may find grace. Boab notices Ruth and Boab bestows grace upon Ruth. Boab says, Boaz says, I have not allowed the young men to touch you. I haven't allowed anybody to attack you. I haven't allowed anybody because you're from Moab to distinguish you from Israel and, and suffer you to be an outcast. When you desire drink, go to my vessels, abide with my maidens, glean from the field. It evokes a response of humility from Ruth. She falls down on her knees and asks, why have I found grace, my Lord? Why have I found favor, my Lord? Why are we agreeable, my Lord? I am a stranger. The word stranger in the Aramaic is the word nokri. It means to be a foreigner. It means that you're a non-relative. Some even use the word to refer to a harlot who can be classified as a strange woman. I am stranger. 
I am a foreigner. I'm not a relative. I am of Moab, enemy of Israel. Remember, Boaz, I am a Moabitish woman from Moab. Can you imagine the thoughts that go through Boaz's mind? Hmm. But I want to answer a question here. Go to Matthew 1, 5. Mm. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Keep your place in Ruth. We're coming back. Go to Matthew 1 and verse 5. My brothers and sisters. Let's find something interesting there. Bible says what? And Solomon begat Booz. Yes. Of Rashab. And Booz begat Obed of Ruth. And? And Obed begat Jesse. Yes. Let's go back to the history of Boaz. Remember the questions of Ruth. Why have I found grace? Why have I found favor? Boaz would ask a question to Ruth. Do you know my history? Mm -hmm. In Matthew 1, 5, you find the history of Boaz. Salmon begat Boaz, you see booze in the New Testament, but it's Boaz of Rechab in the New, but Rehab in the Old Testament. Boaz says, do you know my history? I know all about stranger. Hmm. I know all about no Ruth. I know all about the strange woman and I know all about grace. Amen. Because my mother's name is Rehab. Hmm. Harlot hmm. in Jericho hmm. who found grace Mercy, in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. She was saved from the destruction of Jericho Thank and you. she's now in Israel. That's my mother, Ruth. Uh -huh. I know all about redemption. My sister, I know all about grace. Hmm. That's why when you and I understand where we are from, we understand how to do ministry. We understand patience. And we understand when God sends someone our way for the salvation of their soul to extend to them as much grace as was extended to us. And not when we are saved, to be self-righteous and looking down upon the strangers among us. Mm -hmm. But to extend grace to them in their time of need. The book of Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. Hebrews chapter 4, 14 through 16. I understand there are problems on Facebook. Any problems, run to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Run. To YouTube, Cisterns of Living Water. It can be found. In the it is found also on the Facebook page. The right. Sister Sadia shared the link. Okay, amen. Click on it. Let nothing stand between you and this message this morning. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Number 14 says what? Hebrews 4, 14. Yes. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Yes. That is passed into the heavens. Who is he? Jesus, the son of God. Let us do what? Let us hold fast our profession. Number one, you heard the Bible. We have a great high priest. He is passed into the heavens. Mm -hmm. He is on the right hand of his father. Mm -hmm. He reigns. So let us hold fast our profession, who we profess to be, what we're in, faith. Hmm. Number 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He came to this earth taking on flesh. He endured temptation. He endured persecution. He endured the cross. For the glory that was set before him, the salvation of all humankind. That's our high priest. He understands when you are troubled. He understands when you are tempted. He understands when people look down on you, he understands 
when people have given up on you. He understands when people label you. He understands the weakness of your flesh and your susceptibility to fall prey anytime. What must we do in verse 16? Let it therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Weekly before the throne of grace. Let it come boldly unto the throne of grace. Wishy-washy into the throne of grace. Let it therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Why? That we may obtain mercy. And find what? Grace to help in time of need. Now tell me, when is there ever a time that there is no need for grace? My brothers and sisters, the Bible says, because we are infirm, because we are weak, because we lack sufficient knowledge, because we lack the ability to stand, the Bible says, let us come boldly, boldly. We, Christ died for your opportunity to come boldly. Before the throne of grace, let none stand before your opportunity for grace. Mm -hmm. Let no hypocrite, let no family member, let no friend, let no judge in the courts, let no prison warden, let no person book anything stand between you and your coming to the throne of grace for grace in time of need. You think Ruth didn't know she was a Moabite? Ruth understood the history of the Moabites and Israel. But she would not forsake Naomi. That's why I told you Naomi needed Ruth on this trip much more than even Naomi knew. This woman had a resolve and a faith. I don't care what you call me. Let me tell you something. If a new believer, you, you're a new believer in Christ, mm -hmm. you're watching this today. I want you to be so strong that there is no hypocrite in the church that can take you off of Christ. Amen. That's the type of strength that I want you to have. Oh Lord, and believer, if you're discouraged today because you discover that the, you, people are up against you, mm. I need you to be so strong that none can take you off the platform Hallelujah. of Christ. Hallelujah. I need you to endure these things, brothers and sisters, because the Bible predicted that they will happen. This woman is here, Moabite. Mm -hmm. They look down on her. Mm -hmm. She's got to glean barley, what, what's left over. Mm. That's what she has to glean. She accepts this and she receives grace. Grace is called charis, mm. C-H-A-R-I-S. It is favor on the part of the giver. He doesn't ask us to buy it. He doesn't ask us to bribe him. He just says, come. Mm. Come and receive. Hallelujah. Know your need. When you need Thank food, you, you go to the pantry mm -hmm. when you don't have money. Amen. As much as you go to the pantry, he says, come to me. Amen. All he that labor and are heavy laden, I will Hallelujah. give you rest. Amen. Grace is favor. A free gift on the part of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you're on Facebook, you're having problems, run to YouTube. All right? Thanks on the part of the receiver. All we are is thankful. Thankful that I receive this gift of grace. Mm -hmm. Thankful that it is free of charge. Thank you that God loves me so much. That he sent his son. To be my savior. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Charis, grace, is related to sins and the attributes of God they evoke. Hmm. The minute that sin entered the world, God deployed grace hmm. on the part of Adam and Eve and throughout the centuries. That's why Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So, sin did not take God by surprise. Nope. Sin did not confuse God. Nope. Sin did not throw God off of his plan. Amen. When sin entered, grace abounded. Hallelujah. For where sin abounds, grace doth much more abound. Hallelujah. 
God is never taken by surprise. Mm -hmm. So when sin entered, the attributes of God to word sin are evoked. Love, mm. salvation, Amen. righteousness, restoration, the ministry of reconciliation. That, my brothers and sisters, is the attributes of God that was evoked by the entrance of sin. So, God's free gift called grace and forgiveness because of grace is related to the misery that sin brings. Nobody has to tell you that you're a sinner, you know. Nobody makes you feel the wrath of sin, you feel it. Every time you commit it, you're guilty. Your body is under stress when you're accused, when you're tormented. No one has to tell you the effects of sin are painful. We feel it every single day. Even though we don't commit crimes, the act of laboring to eat is because of sin. Because it is by the sweat of our brow. It is by the hardness of our work. The harshness of the work. The toil it takes on your mind. The toil it takes on your body. Until your body itself is broken. We are living under this because of sin. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness. Grants the recipient. A peace that passes understanding. A calm assurance that one day all this labor under the sun that is vanity and vexation of spirit will be taken away by the most high God and I will live in a world that is free from sin. God's sense out of misery displays itself. In his, in his efforts to entirely remove the problem altogether. When it comes to grace, grace received, grace appreciated, grace lived in, helps you understand the process that God is going through to cleanse you the host. And what will ultimately happen in this world when he purges sin from it. But while we are living in the world, we are being sanctified by his grace. Therefore, the old man is being purged and the new man is living. The only thing that hinders the great power of grace is man's continuing in the rejection of grace and the continuing in perverseness. But you and I who experience it, we live it. But the power of God is only hindered by the one who says no to God and yes to sin. That's why we read in the Bible, we must come boldly to obtain. When you don't come, you don't obtain. But when you come, you obtain the riches of heaven itself. Let's go back to the book of Ruth. So that's grace. Mm -hmm. Why have I found this? Because Boaz in his history understands. And Boaz bestows what he has upon Ruth. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand the grace of God, you cannot, act, you cannot accurately witness in this world. Mm -hmm. Because grace requires love. Mm -hmm. Grace requires truth. Mm -hmm. Grace requires patience. Amen. These three components and much more are some of the fruit of the spirit that are embodied in grace. You cannot accurately witness until these reside in you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look at Ru uh, Ruth chapter two, look at verse 11. Two, Boaz answers her. Why have I found this? R verse uh, 11 says, uh, and Boaz answered and said unto her, yes, it have fully been showed me. Yes. All that thou hast done unto thy mother. Hallelujah. Law, yes. Since the death of thine husband. All right. And uh, yes, go ahead. And how thou hast left thy father 
and thy mother yes and the land of thy nativity yes and art come unto a people yes which thou knewest not her to for listen to this the testimony of ruth is being spread hmm. now let me help you understand something, brethren. The Spirit of God just laid that on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me help you understand something. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes, <laughs> when the testimony of you is given, yes. it will not always be in a favorable light. Well, Let me help you understand that. It is told to Boaz, all that you have done unto your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, you left your father and mother, the land of your nativity, and you come to a people which you do not know. Some of that will be positive, hmm. but some will be that Moabite left Moab mm. and came and desecrated Israel. I want you to understand some of the things that will be said about you mm. is part of your testimony. But some of the people that say it will not always mean it in a good way. Hmm. That old prostitute well, coming to the church. Hmm. That's your testimony. Hmm. Because the fact that you're in the church, the fact that you left Moab, the fact that you left the streets, yes. you left the bottle, you left the drugs, Hallelujah. and you're now in the church. Some may not see that as something good, but it is your testimony. Mm -hmm. Boaz took it as a testimony. It has been fully shown to me. What you have done, you did not leave the side of your mother-in-law. Amen. You did not allow her to make that trip by yourself. By herself. Yes, amen. You left your mother. You left your father. Mm -hmm. And you came to the people of God. Mm -hmm. You did not know them. You did not even know whether they would accept you. But you left mother. And you left father, mm -hmm. whosoever is not willing to forsake mother no. and father Hallelujah. for the sake of God, Hallelujah. he is not worthy of me. Amen. Ruth left mother, left father, and came to the people of God. Hmm. You left your flesh and you came to a spiritual purpose. Verse 12, Sister Sadia. And the, the Lord recompense thy work. And a full reward. I want you to get this, brethren. You're reading this with new eyes now. We're reading this. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. The Lord recompense thy. The Lord recompense thy work. How much reward? A full reward. Yes. Be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. Yes. Under whose wings thou art come to trust. Are you reading this? You heard Boaz says, The Lord now is going to give you. The Lord now is going to repay you. The Lord now is going to bestow upon you mm. a full reward. Amen. Amen, hallelujah. And it is not the gods of Moab that are doing this. It is the Lord God of Israel under whose wings, Ruth, when you left Moab, you came to trust, you came under the wings of God. And you came to put your trust under the wings of God. I need you to understand. When you heard that message. When you decided you're going to leave the world. And come to join a church. You did not just come to be a member of said church. I need you new believer. And if you know a new believer send them this message. I need you to hear me, new believer. You came into a greater purpose than just being a member of a church that goes to church once a week. And if you know a new believer mm -hmm. who's in your church right now, I need you to take them under your wing and teach them Christ. Amen. Don't say let the elders do it. Don't say let the pastors do it. They have their work. But if it is laid upon your heart, if you see no one doing it, you do it. Amen. 
and encourage them in the Lord because when someone leaves the world and accepts the message of the gospel of Christ, they are telling Christ that they are coming under the wings of God whom they decide to trust. So let's go on, brothers and sisters. Amen. What did Ruth say? Verse 13. Then she said, Yes. Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord. Yes. For that thou hast comforted me. Yes. And for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. Uh -huh. Though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Boaz said what? Boaz said unto her, at mealtime, yes. come thou hither, and eat of the bread, yes. and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. Uh -huh. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and, and was sufficed, and, and left. Are you listening to Ruth now? Are you listening to the testimony of Jesus Christ? Embodied in Ruth, Moabitish woman, mm -hmm. now at the table of the wealthy man Boaz. Amen. And Boaz is serving her meal. Amen. Glory to God. Are you listening to Jesus. me? Ruth is now being served by Boaz mm -hmm. because of her faith in a God who she did not yet know, but is now getting to know through his people. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't stop there, my brothers and sisters. Let me show you how the blessings of God comes through the ministry of us and why we've got to be ready when we're getting into ministry. We've got to be ready for what is expected of us. Yeah. Verse number 15. Mm -hmm. And when she was risen up, to glean. What did Boaz say? He commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves. And? Reproach her not. Let me, get, let, me let, let me let you get that, brethren. When we started the sermon, remember, God told Israel, leave the sides and the corners of your field. When you're gleaning, leave the corners for the poor, the widows, and the fatherless. Mm. Boaz says to the young men, when Ruth comes to glean, make her glean in the actual fields. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Do Thank not you, reproach her. Thank you, Jesus. Not the corners. Not the they say oh, Saint Lucia. They say Saint Lucia the Lester. The, mm, not the, the Lester, not the, the leftovers. Lester. Mm -hmm. Glean in the fields. Hallelujah. Do not reproach her. Go Jesus. on, verse 16. Uh -huh. Listen and, to verse 16. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. Yes. And leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. So but remember what we read in the Bible. The Lord said in Deuteronomy, if some happens to fall, mm -hmm. leave them for the widows. Yes. Boaz says, throw some down on purpose. Yes. So that Ruth can get it. Brothers and sisters, yes. I hope you're getting this. <laughs> this is Ruth. This is the faith of Ruth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is the conviction of Ruth. Mm -hmm. This is God's favor mm -hmm. in the life of a Moabitish woman mm -hmm. who says to Naomi in, verse, in chapter 1, your people we'll be shall my be my people. people. Your God we'll will be, be my, my God. God. Where you die, I, I die. die. Hallelujah. Ruth found grace from God through Boaz to Ruth. Will you and I be such a person today like Boaz? Hmm. Who was so attentive to the will of God that we will be the blessing. Hmm. on Ruth to show that there is a God and he's true to his word. Boaz is a blessing to Ruth. Verse 17, go on. So she gleaned in the field yes. until even uh -huh. and beat out that she had gleaned. Yes. And it was about an ephah of barley. Yes. And she took it up uh -huh. and went into the city 
And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. Yes. And she brought forth and gave to her. Yes. That she had reserved after she was sufficed. Verse 19. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? Uh-huh. And where wroughtest thou? Uh-huh. Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. Yes. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said the man's name with whom i wrought today is boaz remember hold on there remember what i said last week naomi will understand that she needed ruth on this trip mm -hmm. much more than she even understood mm -hmm. so now ruth is coming with way more than can ever be reaped mm -hmm. by the widows who reap the corners mm -hmm. So Naomi is saying, wait a minute, who is this uh -huh. that took knowledge of you? Mm -hmm. And she revealed that it is Boaz to which Naomi now testifies what in verse 20. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Yes. Blessed be he of the Lord who have not left of his kindness to the living uh -huh. and to the dead. Uh -huh. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next king's men. All right, now, let's refresh our memories. Go one chapter back, Ruth chapter 1, mm -hmm. 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. Ruth chapter 1, 20 and 21. Let's hear Naomi's, um, pro, uh, Naomi's profession. When she came back to Israel. Verse 20 and 21 says what? Ruth 1 20. Yes. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Yes. Call me Mara. Or bitter. For the Almighty have dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord have brought me home again empty. Uh huh. Why then call me Naomi? Uh huh. Seeing the Lord have testified against me. Yes. And the Almighty have afflicted me. Now go back to Ruth chapter 2. <laughs> and verse number 20. Read it again. And Naomi said unto her daughter in law. Yes. Blessed be he of the Lord who have not left of his kindness yes. to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her. The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next king's men. That's correct. Now, through the weakness of Ruth, through the now blessings of Ruth, through the bestowment of God's grace and what Ruth was able to reap from the fields, Naomi could now, as an Israelite, properly understand who she serves. Hmm. Blessed. Be the Lord, which have not left off his kindness. The character of God is refreshed in the mind of Naomi by the example of Ruth. Hmm. Do not ever think yourselves beyond learning from anyone in this world. Amen. You may find the inspiration of God in what humans would call the strangest of places. Hmm. From the Moabitish, former Moabitish woman, Naomi finds a testimony in her heart to restore the negativity that resided there at the death of her husband and her sons. Bible continues. Let's go to Romans chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Romans chapter 9, reading from verse 22. Romans 9, 22. The Bible says. What if God willing it to show his wrath. Yes. And to make his power known. Yes. Endured with much long suffering. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Yes. And that he might make known the riches of his glory. On the vessels of mercy. Which he had afore. Prepared unto glory. A for prepared unto glory. Wrestles of mercy. Verse tw now go, go on to verse 24. Even us whom he have called, not of the Jews only. No Jews only. Not of the Jews only. But. But also of the Gentiles. What did he say in verse 25? As he saith also in O.C. I will call them my people, which were not my people. What? Go on. And her beloved which was not beloved. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass 
that in the place where it was said unto them, uh -huh. He are not my people. Yes. They shall they be called the children of the living what God. What did Isaiah say? Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. Yes. A remnant shall be saved. Only a remnant. Though they be as the sand of the sea. How much shall be saved? A remnant shall be saved. Go on. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because? Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Verse 29. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath had left us a seed. Yes. We had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. And verse 30. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness even even the righteousness which is of faith no by birth sister sadia faith by faith but what happened to israel in verse 31 but israel which followed after the law of righteousness have have not obtained to the law of righteousness why sister sadia verse 32 wherefore because they sought it not by faith, ah. but as it were by the works of the Lord. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Naomi was a practicing child of Israel. Ruth saw the practices of her mother-in-law, and she was attracted to her mother-in-law and her God. Ruth, in coming back to Israel, sought the Lord by faith. She put her trust in the Lord of Israel. And Romans offers an avenue by which Ruth is saved by faith. Mm -hmm. So by faith she believes in the God who she does not yet know. Naomi is a practicing Jew, but doesn't really know. So Ruth comes, receives grace, and is approved of God, and is taken care of by God, and shows Naomi how the righteousness of God is by faith. Amen. Naomi is purely by works and heritage. Hmm. So she comes back thinking she's under a curse, and she will be cursed forever. She said the Lord of the living and the dead, that means she's dead. Hmm. But here is Ruth receiving it by faith, Thus allowing her mother-in-law to learn that service is rendered to God by faith. Amen. And so it is all about faith. Whether one calls themselves a believer today, your service to God must be rendered by faith. And whether somebody is out there today who have heard for the longest time, you are unable to be saved. I want you to understand it is through your faith in God that it has been revealed to you that you need to come to God for salvation. Ruth had that opportunity as an example for you today. She was a Gentile by birth of the children of Moab, but she finds grace and favor in the eyes of God. Let's go back. Let's go back to Ruth chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Ruth chapter 2. Verse 21, what did she say? And Ruth the Moabite said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men, until they have ended all my harvest. Ruth says. And Naomi Boaz, said no, unto that's fine. Ruth. Ruth said. Mm -hmm. He has been kind to me. Mm -hmm. I know how hard it is. For some of you who came to God. And no one seems to look past your past. Mm -hmm. I know how discouraged. Maybe you're listening to this today. You have already left the church. Because they refuse to look past your past. Your past. We'll see. They are, they, uh, someone has been impatient with you because you have not changed in the speed that they would like you to change mm -hmm. while they themselves are still struggling with something. You feel sometimes in coming to the church that you're part of a hazing ritual hmm. to earn your place in that church. They haze you. So that you can earn a place in church. Hmm. This is not what Christ called his church to do. 
to do or be. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes the very one in whose care you are may be the very one who uses your past for their gratification. Hmm. I want you to get this now. Ladies, you were very promiscuous before you came to the church. And you baptized in Christ. And you came to the church. And that old pervert elder or pastor <laughs> knows you were weak in that area. Yes. And takes that opportunity yes. to P-R-E-Y on you mm. while he says he's coming to P-R-A-Y for you. Mm. Young man, Mercy, oh Lord. young woman, you came to the church and the very one whose trust you are placed under the hireling is the very one who tries to use you. Mm. I want you to know, today all is not lost. Amen. You may have encountered a hypocrite. You may have encountered a wolf in sheep's clothing. But I need you not to give up on God. I need you now to let Ruth be your example. I need you now to allow the faith of Ruth to be your faith. You will not be deterred. You will not be deterred. You will not be downtrodden. You're hurt, but you will allow yourself to be healed by God. Every single hireling, the Bible says, I will call the pastors who scatter my sheep. They will answer to the Most High God. I need you to let God be your healing today. You know what was said to Ruth? Blessed be God. So blessed be he that took knowledge of you. Let's get to Psalm 41. Let's go to Psalm 41 in your Bibles. The book of the Psalms, 41. The Bible said in Psalms 41, Boaz says, Blessed be he that take knowledge of thee. I'm speaking to somebody today. Mm. We're coming to a close. I'm speaking to somebody today in Psalm 41. You've been downtrodden. You've been maligned. You've been called names. You've been called names of your past. You've been taken advantage of. They don't look at you like one of us in the church. You don't fit any clique, any gang, any group. I want you to understand something today. Psalm 41. Bible says what? Blessed is he that considereth the poor. What will the Lord do? The Lord will deliver him in time of I trouble. need you today to get to know God. I need you today to put your faith where it belongs, not in humans, not in a church, in God. Amen. What will what did verse 2 say? The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. I need you to understand this. The Lord is your preservation. Amen. There are some in the church who want to pray on you. There are some in the church who will defend you. Yes. Don't give up hope. There are God's people still left alive. Amen. There are God's true pastors still leading. Amen. There are God's true elders still ministering. There are God-fearing members still in those pews. I need you to connect with them today. And if Hallelujah. you're one of them, I need you to stand bold and proclaim it today. Hallelujah. Verse number three. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Upon what type of bed? The bed of languishing. Thou will? Make all his bed in his sickness. Verse number four. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. I need you to pray this today. Lord. Be merciful unto me. Do what? Heal my soul. For. I have sinned against thee. Verse 5. My enemies speak evil of me. Yes. When shall he die? Uh -huh. And his name perish? Hey, you, you understand what your enemies are saying? Your enemies are saying, when shall he or she die? When shall they go away? Hmm. I will be gratified in your death, some people are saying. Verse number six. And if he come to see me, yes, he speak of vanity. Yes. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. Yes. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. When they come to visit you, 
They speak vanity. They speak falsehood. They, the heart gathereth iniquity in itself. No matter what you tell such a person, they take it in their heart and they repeat it to, they repeat it in error. They telleth it abroad, the Bible says. Verse number seven. All that hate me whisper together against me. Yes. Against me do they divide. They form words. groups. They cut you down. All right. The Bible says everything they devise is for your hurt. Go on. The evil disease. Say they cleave fast unto him. Yes. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. They tell you that you're sick because you're a sinner. They tell themselves that you must have done some great sin. So God afflicted you with your disease. They do not see healing in your future. They testify death against you. They are happy when you're sick. I need you to get this reality about some of the tears that are around you. Some of the, the agents that Satan has simply to discourage you from your platform. Verse 9. Yea, my own familiar friend. Yes. In whom I trusted. Yes. Which did eat of my bread. What did he do? Have lifted up his heel. In your house, your friend, your closest confidant have lifted up their heel against you. Verse number 10. But thou... O Lord, be merciful unto me. Yes. And raise me up. When all else seems to be against you, cry out to the one who has never left you, Amen. never forsaken you, never abused you. O Lord, be merciful unto me. And raise me up. Raise me up. That I may requite them. Verse 11. By this I know that thou favorest me. Why? Because my enemy doth not triumph over me. People do things to us. Do not let anybody's wickedness triumph over you, the child of God. Things can be done and said, but triumphs cannot be had mm -hmm. by the descendants of Satan upon the descendants of God. By that I mean born again believers in Christ and the rejecters of Christ in whom the seed of Satan continues to grow. Verse number 12. And as for me, yes, thou upholdest me in my integrity and, and settest me before thy face forever. That's why I said when I'm done with this message today, I want somebody to be built up in their integrity in Christ. You can have integrity even though you're afflicted for a time. Even though you're tormented for a time. You still stand up straight. Let me tell you something. A person who's sick, who believes in God, is more upright than a healthy person who's an unbeliever. Get this now. If you're sick and believe in God, mm -hmm. you are more upright in the face of God yes. than the standing unbeliever who's condemning you. Because God will be glorified in your healing. Last verse, number 13. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For how long? From everlasting. To what? And to everlasting. How many amens? Amen and amen. I allowed you to read the word of God. Let Psalm 42 be your stay, my brothers and sisters. Whatever was done to you, that was hurtful, cannot, should not, is not equipped to destroy you. Satan wants you to think that his devices destroy you. But God wants you to understand. God don't need to deceive. Satan wants to deceive you to believe that his devices will destroy you. So when your mind is destroyed, you're actually destroying yourself. Mm -hmm. God says, stand firm. And see the righteousness of the Lord that endures forever and ever. Amen. Let's close our roof to be continued next week. <laughs> okay. 22 and 23.
What did Naomi say to Ruth? And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, Yes. It is a it is good, my daughter. Yes. That thou go out with his maiden. Yes. That they meet thee not in any other field. Yes. So she kept fast by the maidens uh -huh. of Boaz. Yes. To glean unto the end of barley harvest. And of wheat harvest, yes, and dwelt with her mother in law to God be the, be the glory. glory, amen. Ruth's circumstances did not deter her from drawing close to Israel, and here she is gleaning in the harvest and is able to produce for her mother in law. Mm -hmm. She had no sons, she has no husband. But she has a faithful daughter-in-law who's able now to sustain her. My brothers, my sisters, hey, some mothers-in-law out there, understand this. You may think you know faith. You may very well have been given a daughter-in-law through whom you can learn true faith. Women out there in society that have been maligned, that have been looked down on, that have been told you are, you, are, you are not useful, you have no value. I want you to understand the value that was placed in Ruth to help you understand. God has never given you less value than he gives to his daughters. Mm -hmm. God loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. Your restoration is not in the acceptance of men. Your restoration is in the acceptance of God. Amen. And any true man of God will recognize your value. Amen. Unbelievers out there today, Moabites out there in the world, it is possible for you to be saved. Let none tell you that you cannot come to a God who sent his son to save the entire world. Believers out there today, are you ready to be a Boaz? Are you ready to be the one through whom God is working to bestow his blessings upon the people, the roofs he placed in your, in, in your field? Mm -hmm. We will continue this message next week, brothers and sisters. But I pray that you have received the word of God today with joy. Whatever your situation is in life, this message is tailored to fit you today. Let the spirit of God continue to impress upon you the need for you to be obedient to the message as it is spoken. Amen. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, the word that you have laid on my heart is now spoken. The responsibility now is that of us to continue to let it marinate within our hearts, within our minds. It is a message that you can tailor to fit each person, believer and unbeliever. We all have a responsibility in life. Let your people be obedient to your call. Let your people answer your call. Amen. Let someone here today who has not been saved, someone watching this, whatever day, month, or year they're watching this message, I pray that it will have an adverse effect on their lives to be saved. I thank you for the privilege to preach it as much as to hear it, for it is for me as well. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We ask your dismissal with your blessing. See us through the remainder of today and the coming week. And lead us back here again next week where we will continue this series. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I thank you my brothers and sisters for your being here. Thank you my brothers and sisters for being here today and for listening to this message. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes and for your shares. Thank you for your prayers and your support of all that we do here today. God bless and keep you for the remainder of today and the coming week. And remember, Sister Sad and I are off tomorrow night. And on Thursday night, we'll be back with you next week, Saturday. God bless you and keep you in all your ways as you close out another week and start off a new one. Uh, it won't play on this. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you.
angels fall straight from Sister Janet Janice Niles and Sister Nalja Niles. God bless you all and the Niles family. Sister Carol Smith. God bless you and the Smith family. Elder Robert James, my brother, my friend. God bless you and your family. Sister Indra Palmfield. God bless you and your family. Sister Fia Charles. God bless you and your family. Sister Fee, God bless you, provide for you and your family. My dear brother Peter George, God bless you, God heal you and your family. My brother Edward Emilian, God bless you and your family. Sister Laurencia Pierre, God bless you and your family. Sister Sylvia Surface, God bless you and your family. Sister Vanette Charles, God bless you and your family. Sister Camilla Arthur, God bless you and your family. Brother Stetson, Sister Anika Greensward, God bless both of you and your families. Brother Alexander Boyton, God bless you, sir, and your family. Sister Gilded Weeks, God bless you. God bless mommy and your family. Sister Zion Princess, God bless you and your family. Sister Juliette Gong, God bless you. God bless Eli. God bless your entire family. Sister Paula Cho, Brother Chun, Brent, Chelsea, Kia Sky. God bless your family and all your families. God bless all of you, my friends. Everyone else, live on YouTube and Facebook, God bless you. If you're watching this after it is live, God's blessings and mercies upon you. God's grace on every one of you.